all second half substitutes, making a big difference, making a massive, taking massive three points at home. It's the first time I believe in 12, where we had lost 12 matches in a row to Pep Guardiola's uh, Manchester City. This is huge for Arsenal. Massive weekend. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that this Arsenal team has been kind of criticized for, is right? their, their like inability to master their emotions in these big games and retain composure. Did this feel like a, like a signal of growth to you then, I guess? A signal of growth, but... I'm not one of those Arsenal supporters that's like, oh, we won the league already, you know, because you, you beat a weakened Manchester City side. This is not the... With a weakened Arsenal side. Thank you. Yes, but this is not the Manchester City that was dominant last year. They're not the same without Kevin De Bruyne. And, and to go into depth, then, without Gundogan and without uh, Riyad Mahrez, they just don't have the same fear factor going forward for mm -hmm. me. So it, it is a big win. It's Manchester City. But... I don't put too much stock in it this early in the season. I think it's difficult to say that this is a week in Manchester City. Up until this, at the beginning of the match, they were on more points they than they were at Kevin this place last year. That's yeah. the biggest issue, but they were on more points in the season than they had last season. So I wouldn't necessarily call them weakened. But I think what you'll find is that... You wouldn't early, call them weakened? No, not necessarily. If they're they're still able to get more points than they were at this point last season, that, to me, that's not weakened. They won the treble last if season. If you're down a pivotal player, you're weakened by Sure, of course. And no? Arsenal, the most the important is, player on Arsenal's pitch is, is uh, Bukayo Saka. So they were also down a player. But... What you see is the ineffectiveness of Erling Haaland without a KDB. He had zero shots on goal. Yeah, zero. incredible. He's getting no service. But that's not because that's not just because Kevin De Bruyne wasn't there. That's because uh, Saliba and Gabriel Magalhaes still have Erling Haaland in his pocket right now. Saliba's putting little little snacks in there just to feed Erling Haaland. Do you want? What do you want? You want some pickled herring? I don't know what they eat in Norway. What do you want? Whale blubber? Sounds disgusting. I got it for you. Yeah. This is incredible. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Look, uh, this was this was a defensive master plan. By Mikel Arteta. And I think one of the things, and you mentioned sort of dialing back the emotions in important games, Mikel Arteta, if there's one thing that I could hold against him, is his decision making in the past has been a little sketchy. And if you notice, he waited to make the substitution. Uh, uh, Pep Guardiola made three subs in the 68th minute, Mikel Arteta made three subs in the 75th minute. Gave it a second, saw how they were resetting, saw how they were about to play the game or shift the, shift the tactics, and then he made his subs. And those subs were essential in the win. That, to me, shows growth on a Mikel Arteta level, which I've been a huge fan of Mikel Arteta, but if there's one thing I can sort of use against him or, or give him, not give him credit for, it's the way he's been able to use, the way he's ineffective with subs in the past. Well, I, I would say well before that halftime, making a sub and taking Trossard off, that was the key of getting Martinelli on because Martinelli is a different type of player as well. I, I think when you look at his substitutions, it wasn't just reactionary. It mm -hmm. was making those adjustments at halftime is where I think Arteta has shown growth for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, agree. Great. Yeah. Psychological impact, though, of beating, it, whether it's the best version of Manchester City or not, it's still Manchester City, widely considered, right, the, the best football team in the world. So the psychological impact of that has to be huge. I, it has to be, but I'll also I'm, I agree with Charlie in that you have to pull back. Uh, if you're going to be, you know, playing for the title and playing for a uh, champion, you have to take these games with a grain of salt. You have to say, we were supposed to be So you hype them. or you not hype? I'm hyped that we got the win, but I'm not saying we won the league. I'm not walking around going like that was it. We we crossed the final hurdle. Nobody's doing that. I, there was no. a lot of fans that got a little bit a little bit too excited. There, there, I think there are, are a number of of Arsenal supporters that put too much stock into this win. It's a big win. It's massive win. Like you said, psychologically, it's it's a big step forward to say, hey, we can beat Manchester City. It is at home. Beat Manchester City at the Etihad. Now we're talking something different. But oh. you also have to balance Europe. So Champions League as well. So I think when you're, when you're competing on all fronts, there's a different mentality after a win like this against Manchester City. I like this result just purely from a spectator standpoint, you know, because I think this league right now, it's kind of up for grabs. Like, I don't think there's going to be one team that is going to run away with it like we've seen City do in the past or Arsenal last year, you know, that kind of comes down to those final two teams. I think there's going to be, like, you add, like, a Liverpool in there, a Tottenham, Tottenham. Um, a Brighton. Don't or, forget United. You know, it's United. United. Oh. What? Okay. Ten plays? Okay. <laughs> okay. We're talking okay. about conference league? What are we talking about, Kate? Okay. United. But it just feels like it's... That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be more horses in this race this season, and I think that's exciting, you know? Like it, 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 it's It becomes a, a much more enticing product to, to watch when there's more teams involved. Um, so I, I loved it. I thought it was a, a really a positive result for, for Arsenal, and yeah, it's always kind of fun to see the giant go down City you know the David and Goliath consecutive thing. losses since 2018 yeah I know it's nuts it's crazy